Christ the Lord is risen. Christ the Lord is risen
pray. Thank you for your presence, for the communion of saints, for those worshiping online, and for one another for this unique occasion. We know that nothing can separate us from your great love. In gratitude for that knowledge, we now gather, separated from one another, but united in you. Amen. And now I invite the children that are present at home and in other places to please join me for our children's time. Do you want to do the, let's do Jesus Loves Me, Miss, Miss Beth. morning, children. It's good to know that you are there even though I cannot see you. I want to tell you about one of my favorite commercials lately. It is a commercial where people come out, there's this one person, and he's crabby, and he's just ugly to everybody, and they give this guy a Snickers bar, and he changes and he becomes nice, and he becomes uh, sweet and better. Now, I don't think that candy bars are magic, but one of the things I like about that commercial is it says, when you're hungry, you are not yourself. And this morning, when we talk about the Easter story, there are some people in it, the women at the tomb, the women, Mary Magdalene and the other women, who are coming to see Jesus and they are not themselves. They are very sad because their friend, Jesus, has died and they're coming to the tomb. Sometimes we get very, very sad and we're not ourselves. But later in the story, they get scared and they run away. Have you ever been scared? Have you ever been sad? I have, and most everybody has been happy or sad or, fair or scared. You know, our feelings and our emotions, the things that we feel in our heart, the fe things that we feel, God made them as when God made us human. Those women at the tomb, when they were scared and when they were sad, that was a natural thing. God gave us our feelings so that we could feel. But sometimes our feelings, when they come out the wrong way, can hurt other people. And I want to talk about four feelings in particular that can uh, hurt other people and hurt ourselves. When we're hungry, when we're angry, when we're lonely, and when we're tired. I know that sometimes late at night, it's hard. When it's near bedtime and you don't want to go to bed, you want to stay up and you get grumpy, 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 grumpy. And your mom and dad say it's time to go to bed because they know that you are not able to be yourself because you are grumpy. It's okay to feel those feelings when you're tired or when you're angry or when you're lonely or when you're tired. But I notice that hungry, angry, lonely, and tired are four letters that form a word. That word is halt, which means stop. So when you're feeling any of those feelings, we need to stop and know what we're feeling and maybe tell somebody but don't be ugly about it. You know, mommy, I'm just feeling hungry. Or you might hear a lot of people these days talk about being lonely. 
It's okay to be lonely and it's okay to be tired. But the good news is that when we share that, that feeling with somebody special, when we let them know how we feel, we can feel better. Because Jesus also wanted those women to feel better as well. And that's one reason why we celebrate Easter. So today, when we hear the story about the women at the tomb, see what they're feeling as they go, as they go to see uh, the, the tomb there, the grave of Jesus. Now, I want to also tell you something. As we're talking about Snickers bars, when you come back, when you're able to sit here beside me on that Sunday, I'm going to have an Easter present for you. It's going to be a little Snickers bar or a, a treat that your parents can say that you have, can have, okay? If they'll let you have it, I will certainly share it because that is going to be my present to you. May God bless you in this Easter week, and I hope that you find ways to love Jesus with other people. Can we pray? Let's hold our hands like this. Dear Jesus, we feel lots of things. We feel happy and we feel sad. We feel hungry and we feel so full. We feel lonely. We feel like we're with other people. We feel like we're tired and you give us rest. Lord God, bless us in these feelings that we have, that we claim them and live fully for you. In Jesus' name, amen. gospel lesson for this morning comes from Mark's gospel, chapter 16. We will be reading verses 1 through 8. 
Hear now the word of the Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You're, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who, has, who was crucified. Jesus has been raised. He is not here. Look, there's the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this, the holy word of our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Savior, come with us. Risen Savior, come to us. Risen Savior, go ahead of us in the living of these days and in the proclamation of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Of the four gospel accounts in the Bible, of Easter. John's account is perhaps the most a favorite one. It's probably one of the most extensive as well. John chapter 20 is the inspiration for that favorite hymn in the garden. Mark's Easter narrative is short, on the other hand, and not at all sweet. Mark finished his gospel originally, the whole book originally, here at verse 8. It is a jagged ending, like metal that has been twisted and wrenched apart. Only a couple of hundred years after Mark wrote this gospel were there verses added 
to smooth the rough edge that Mark left with the last word being afraid. We live in a time where, like the women, we are seized by terror and amazement. Bewilderment and grief are part of the landscape of our lives. Easter this year is unlike anything in our collective memory. Rather than full pews and voices echoing off these storied walls, we are dispersed and worshiping at a safe distance. As broken as the Easter story of Mark is, it fits very well for where we are. It offers us a word of hope, thankfully, in this jagged season of our lives. Mary Magdalene and the other two women had already been through the emotional ringer for the better part of a week. They had seen Jesus arrested and put to death, the community of disciples dispersed, Everything that was so vital to them a week earlier was cast to the wind. Now, they had one more obligation to perform before they returned to life as it was before Jesus came. They had obligation and habit. Obligation and habit can see us through the most difficult of times as the body and mind are occupied and distracted from the heaviness of the moment. The weight of their conversation as they make their way to the tomb was housekeeping in tone. Who was going to move the heavy stone that was in front of the tomb? Their lives and the gait of their stride were infused with grief. Grief is a very natural and human thing. We should not belittle the women for feeling it that day, even on a day of happiness like Easter, a day of joy like the resurrection. Grief, grief is natural and very human. It was natural for Jesus as he wept at the tomb of Lazarus, as it was for these women on the way to the tomb. The tears of Jesus at Lazarus' tomb remind us that it is very healthy and very healing to acknowledge our loss. In this season of life, we recognize our grief. We mourn the enormous loss of life and all of the wrecked lives through financial loss. But beyond those obvious and weighty griefs, we concede the smaller losses that plague us at this time. The smaller losses that can accumulate and overwhelm us. We grieve time that we have lost with loved ones, isolated and apart from us. We grieve the proms and graduations that we will not attend this spring. We miss the laughter with friends at a local restaurant and in our preoccupation with things viral and digital, we miss handshakes and hugs. As the grieving women approach the tomb, Mark races through what happens next in a mere five verses. The women saw the stone rolled aside. They were alarmed by a young man dressed in a white robe. And he told them Jesus had been raised and was not there. 
Then he goes on to tell them that, to go tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus would meet them in Galilee, just as Jesus had told them. They fled the tomb, seized by fear and amazement, and they said nothing to no one, for they were afraid. With this jagged ending at verse 8, it looks like fear and grief and chaos won, doesn't it? Just like it looks like fear and chaos are winning today. By the way, I just, you know this, but I remind you, fear and chaos were a part of life before this pandemic. But COVID-19 has become a horrible amplifier augmenting with sharp contrast to the common human fears that plague us on a normal everyday basis. Loneliness, financial desperation, death, pain, and the very fundamental lack of control in our daily lives. We cannot see the other side of this pandemic. No medical expert can tell us how long it will last. No economist can tell us what the financial implications will be. These unknowns fuel our fear. We miss the close company of friends and family, and that feeds our loneliness. After all of this is over, we have no idea what our world will look like or what our lives will be like. And that stokes our anxiety and despair. Like Mary Magdalene and the others, we can miss what is happening before us because of our fear, our loneliness, and despair cloud our vision. Just as the women of old, we seem to be seized with fear and amazement. And the jagged reality of the present fear seems to be the last word in the gospel of our lives. But hear the good news. Hear the good news. In the cold, lifeless ground of pandemonium left by the death and the burial of Jesus, a seed of hope was planted. In the journey with the spices and the futile conversation about moving the stone and the terror that quickened their hearts, the messenger offers a word. He has been raised. Like a seed planted deep and covered by the cold dirt of late spring remains unseen until it breaks through as a tiny shoot, they could not claim the word of hope until it was realized later. What they got on Easter Sunday that day long ago was a word forward. They could not see Jesus because he had been raised. As one commentator said, they are given a message that points beyond the reality of the tomb to a future they cannot yet see and are called to move into by faith. We know, we know the gospel and the resurrection of Jesus Christ did not end at the harsh and abrupt ending of verse 8. We know the women did go tell Peter and the disciples that Jesus was going ahead of them. Fear was not the last word in the gospel of our lives. Fear is not our last word. 
It is not even the first word in the next chapter of our life experience. Because a seed planted in this spring of our discontent is starting to sprout through the cold ground. A word has been given. It is a word that calls us beyond this moment of our lives. It is a transcendent word. It is a word that points beyond the reality of COVID-19, a world beyond the reality of our personal sinfulness and our corporate brokenness. We have been given a message this Easter morning, a word and a message of hope that can allay our fears. Fear is not the last word. The first line of our 2020 Easter story is this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Jesus has been raised. Loneliness in isolation will not be triumphant no matter how bad it looks now. The dismal twins of anxiety and despair will be vanquished. We will remember this time. It is a defining moment for us as individuals, for the church, for the nation, and for the world. But it will not last. Faith, hope, and love remain as the sustaining gifts of God that go with us in the darkest of days, in the most dismal of anxious moments. God is there through faith, hope, and love, and we share God in our times of crisis. As Peter and the disciples met the risen Lord ahead of them in Galilee, so too will the resurrected Christ meet us in the places of our lives. Because he lives, fear is not the last word. Because he lives, Fear is not the last word. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon. An empty grave is there to prove our Savior lives. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. May God bless you in this Easter season and may faith, hope, and love be your first and last word. Alleluia. Amen.
righteousness with your lips and with your heart to proclaim the Apostles' Creed, the traditional version as it is found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. There are days that I truly hope that the sound booth mutes my microphone. I made a very joyful noise today. I don't know if it was muted or not, but I'm happy about Easter this day. My friends, as we gather for our time of prayer, this morning after I offer the the joys and concerns of our congregation and of our world, I invite you to have a moment of prayer for yourselves as uh, we have an instrumental call to prayer. And following that time, I will offer our morning prayer. But let's remember this day, Sumter. It seems that we have become a hot spot. I knew we were famous before, but this is a wholly different thing. This is a bad thing. And let us do everything in our power to uh, keep distant from one another, socially distant. We may be together in the ways of of life and love uh, as we go through this together. But I invite you to please heed the warnings of uh, our public health officials. Let us remember our public health officials and the medical workers on the front line this week. Uh, I spoke with a couple of doctors this week and it is truly uh, overwhelming work. Uh, And the peak is not to be here in South Carolina for a few weeks. So let us pray for uh, our healthcare workers and also for our political leaders. Uh, Leadership is never about making sure everybody is happy. Leadership is about doing what is right in the crisis of the moment. So let us keep our leaders in our prayers as well. And there are other concerns and joys of your heart, I'm sure, things that weigh heavy in your life. Know that even though I may not voice that this day, God hears that, God honors that, God heals that, and God loves you. At this time, I invite you to spend a few quiet moments in prayer and hear and meditate upon this music.
Almighty God, thank you for Easter. Thank you for hope that moves beyond this present darkness. Thank you for the ways you have reached into our lives. We thank you, O Lord, for those that have called us and reached out to us through letters, through texts and phone calls and other ways, O God. We pray that you will equip us to love one another even in our isolation and separateness. O Lord, our God, hear our prayers this day for those that are hurting, lost, and broken. And for, O Lord, what the empty tomb means. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all of the world. This pandemic has touched every country in one way or another. We pray, O oh Lord, for the church, that in this time of adjustment, you will give us vision for what is to come next, not anchored by the things of the past, but moving forward in ways that honor you and serve others from the heart of Sumter. O oh Lord our God, on this Easter Sunday, as we gather around the tables of our choosing in the homes that separate us, we pray that you will bless the fellowship there, the laughter and the love, and that real soon, O oh God, we can come together as congregations yet again, not taking for granted our time with you in this place. Equip us now to be the church dispersed, that this place, O oh Lord, as beautiful as it is, is not the church. We are the church together. And send us in the places you would have us to be. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Today, as we remember the uh, other opportunities that we have to share and the gifts that we have. One of the things, one of the opportunities that you have is through online giving here at church. And I want to tell you that there are many ways to give to uh, Trinity. There is the regular mail and stamp. There is your online banking. There are other platforms that are on our website. There are others of text give and many other ones. And the thing that I want to tell you is Pick the one that works best for you. Yes, there are fees associated with some of them, and we want to let you know that ahead of time. But don't let a fee stop you from being your, your generous selves. We thank you for the ways that you have been generous to Trinity over the past three weeks. And in coming weeks, we will have special times together uh, online or otherwise, in which we will emphasize our missions, our healing Guatemala, our offerings to Sumter United, and you'll hear more about those later. But in this time of when we would normally do our offering, I invite you to think and pray about all that God has given you. Think and pray and offer God a word of thanks. I invite Beth and our instrumentalists now to lead us in a time of reflection.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of talented musicians. We thank you for the gift of beautiful Easter lilies. We thank you for the gift of life and love and health. Lord, we return to you now a portion of all that you have given us through praise and through worship and through the sharing of our gifts of time and talent and treasure with one another. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will be blessed in our service and in our sharing of your love. These things we ask in your name, O oh Lord, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Miss Beth, hold just a second, please. I want to announce, if we can, you see the beautiful Easter lilies that are here. They will be available uh, outside. We're placing them outside Tuesday morning. They should be there by 10 o'clock. Uh, you can uh, get them then. They'll be under the, the uh, covered walkway here. Amanda and uh, Earl will have them out by then, if not other people. But we thank you for your gifts on the online bulletin that you may have received through email. You will see uh, all the copy of uh, those uh, who gave these flowers in honor or in memory. And now, my friends, it's time for us to sing again on this Easter Sunday, one of the all-time favorites for Easter, Up From the Grave He Arose. Will you sing with me? Hear now this prayer for this Easter day. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection may, 
By the renewing of your spirit, arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Go now and be the church deployed and dispersed in the living of your life wherever you may be. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.